This episode of Rambopra Radio is brought to you by Industrialist Brand. Head on over to industrialistbrand.com for all your combat sports apparel needs. Don't forget to use code GEN10 at checkout for a 10% discount on your next order. Once again, that's industrialistbrand.com. Hit that ball! Rambopra Radio with your host, Gen T. Fuck, I don't know what, what the fuck... Fuck it! Jen is a warlord! I'm fucking coming for you! Now I feel poo coming out of my bum. So it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a lot right now, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Rambo Pro Radio. I am your host, Jen T. Twitter and Instagram at Jen T523. Friends! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i don't i don't even know where to begin <laughs> so i'm just gonna start <laughs> Uh, let's just start off with the <laughs> the festivities, if you will. Uh, shout out to uh, Brother Sean. Uh, Brother Sean, I work with at my work, and he's a, a listener to this podcast. And he just celebrated a birthday, but not just any birthday. His 50th birthday, man. Holy shit. The guy doesn't look a day over 30. I'm telling you. If you saw... Sean, or if you know Sean, I'm telling you, my man look like he's been 30 for 20 years. How how the hell do you do that, my guy? How the hell do you do that? But a shout out to you and your bro. You're celebrating your 50th. Uh, kudos to you. Uh, you made it another year around the sun, let alone 50 times. That is remarkable. Uh, shout out to those dudes. Uh, they just went to Japan. Man, every all of my friends are going to Japan. That means I gotta go. I mean, I literally know at least at least six people in the last eight months that have gone to Japan for like two weeks. And I'm like, damn it, I need to get my shit together and get to Japan. But I've always been scared because I don't, you know, my Japanese is y'all heard my Japanese is not very good. <laughs> it's bound to piss some people off. Like, <laughs> hello, welcome, arigato, gozaimasu, welcome to Japan. I'm like. Get off the plane, I'm like, Charlie Brown, son, Ante Madero. <laughs> so ski. <laughs> bushy, bushy. <laughs> That's all I got. Ich ni san chi. I don't, I don't want to get beat up if I say the wrong thing. <laughs> I got to brush up on me Japanese. Uh, at one point, I tried to learn, but man, it was overwhelming. Hard, 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 hard. One of the harder languages to learn. Uh, Japonesa. Um, but one of these days, I will get to Japan. Uh, now for the, 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 the ultra fun stuff. So <laughs> it's time for Customers of the Week. Well, this week, uh, I don't know. I don't know what was happening to my guy, but he was just one of these people, you know, the customer's always right, even though I'm giving, being a complete arsehole. Um, I was busy helping a handicapped person, one of our disabled patrons, of course. And he kept looking at me strange and smiling and looking at me and uh, from like super far away. And I was like, "Mm -hmm." Um, yeah, so I kept helping the disabled person in a wheelchair because, you know, that's what I'm doing. Clearly, I can see that this uh, this black guy needs help. But he's being rude about it. He's like, "Mm -hmm," like, you know, laughing and kept looking at me and giggling and then uh, uh, turning away. And I was like, what the fuck's up with this dude? And then uh, um just out of nowhere, I was like, yo, 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 can I get some help over here? Can I get some help over here? And I was like, uh, sir, 
I'm helping somebody, I'll be right with you, okay? So when I got done helping a uh, disabled patron, this guy was like, I was like, uh, okay, sir, how can I help you? It's about time. Yo, 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 yo. It's about time. It's about time you come over and help me. It's about time. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Settle down, P. Diddy. <laughs> I was like, settle down, my guy. I was like, there's no need for the extra thing. I'm here now, so how may I assist you? Okay. You know, I'm here to help, but all you want to do is just make a scene about it. I was just like, okay. So every time he was like, yeah, it's about time. It's about time. I, 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 I starts rallying up. I was like, okay, sir. So I was busy helping a disabled person. You know, I don't know if you saw the person in the wheelchair I was helping, but I was helping someone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I was like, okay, well, then why are you going on about it? <laughs> Banging on about it. Let's just get you the help you need so you can get the fuck out of here. Get out of my sight. Out of my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, I've been shopping here for 20 years. I've never seen you before. I've never seen you before. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> and I was just like, mm, well, uh. The badge here says 2003. So that was 20 years ago. <laughs> Soon to be 21. <laughs> he goes, mm, well, I need some help over here. Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Are you knowledgeable? Can you tell me? Can you tell me about this Ash where And I was like, Ashwakanda? Yeah, Ash where I'm like, okay, yeah, here it is. Well, what do you recommend? What do you recommend? Which one's the best one? I was like, well, they're all good, sir. Um, you're just going to decide uh, what price range looks good to you. Do you want it in powder? Do you want it in liquid? Do you want it in gummies? Do you want it in tablet? Do you want a capsule? What do you want? It's all up to you. What's your recommendation? What's your recommendation? Yo, 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 Go with the organic one. That's just a preference. Um, not that it's or- because it's organic, but because you only have to take one pill a day. He goes, uh, okay. And he's like, well, <laughs> congratulations. I was just testing you. I was just testing you or whatever. I already buy this brand. I already buy this brand. And I was just like, okay, well, then why did you ask? I was just testing you. I was just testing you to see if you're knowledgeable or whatever. I was just like, bro, you don't understand i am the last the last motherfucker you want to be tested right now okay because there is the fine line between testing me and catching these fiery hands <laughs> every time you'd ask me something i gave him an answer yeah i'm just testing you yo 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 yo, yo. i'm just testing you i've never seen you before wow 20 years 20 years i've never seen you before yeah, I know your coworker. I know your coworker. And I was like, okay. And how can I help you? He is not here. How may I assist you? Yeah, which one's the best one? Which one's the best one? Ah, I'm just testing you. I'm just testing you. I already buy this one. And I was just like, yo, I, immediately that in slow motion, that Kendrick Lamar song, uh, 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 DNA like popped in my head. And I was like, uh, He's like, I know just who you want. Say, you a, you a, you a bitch. Use a, use a, use a bitch. I was like, bro, I know your DNA. You a bitch, fam. You is a bitch. Why are you this person? You come into a grocery store to test workers that work there? Listen, I make minimum wage, okay? I don't need you to test me. I'm already been tested. I'm battle tested right now, bitch. I don't need any more tests, okay? The test is for me to even just fucking show up on time for starters. Because I'm late every fucking day. Because it's discouraging knowing that I make minimum wage and I haven't had a pay raise in like 10 years. Okay? 10 fucking years. Okay? So, knowing that, knowing that I'm coming to my shitty job. But the only reason why I come to my shitty job is because my friends. I come to my shitty job for my friends, man. Because my friends make it make me forget that this is a shitty fucking job. <laughs> but once all my friends leave, I don't want to go there no more. I don't want to be there. 
So, I'm like, bro, why are you this customer that's been like, oh, the customer's always right. I got to test you. Make sure you get, yeah, you belong here. Because I'm in charge. I got customers always like, yo, 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 yo. Say you user, you user, you user, bitch. Say user, you user, you user, bitch. <laughs> Dog. I am not that person. When I go to a store, first of all, when I go to any store, I try to find it myself. If I'm in a rush, then I walk faster, okay? And then when I cannot find it myself, I have done two, three laps around the store, then I go and bother somebody, okay? And then I say please and thank you, and I'm courteous. I'm not here to be like, hey, yo, hey, yo, come over here, worker, yeah. Uh, yeah, where's your deli at? Yo, 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 where's your deli at? Or whatever. Oh, oh, it's in the back? I was just testing you. I was just testing you. Uh, where's your chill body flip cup yogurt at? Where's your chill body flip cup yogurt at? Yo, 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 yo. I was just testing you. I was just testing you. Like, bro, you, 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 use a, use a, use a bitch. Use a, use a, use a, use a bitch. Ha, ha, ha. What the fuck, man? I was just like, wow. So every time he was like, <laughs> yo, 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 yo. And I was just like, uh-huh, yeah. I did not change my demeanor. I just answered the question. And then if he kept going on, I was like, oh, here, well, here's another answer. I was helping this person. Oh, you don't see me. Oh, uh, I've been here for 20 years. Oh, that's too bad. You don't see me. Um, fine. Not my problem. Not my problem. Your problem. Your problem. So I kept putting it back on him. Kept putting it back on him. He's like, yo, 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 yo. I'm just playing. Yo, 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 yo. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. And I was just like, yeah, I know you are. Have a nice day. I was just like, what the fuck? Come on, man. Come on. This shit is hard. Life is hard. Every single one of us is going through some shit. We don't need you to come up in the fucking shop and put more of your shit on our shit, okay? The plate is full. The plate is full, fam. Can you at least be a decent human being when you go to a store and you see a a shop worker? Please don't be a dick. Now, if they're being a dick to you, fine. Then that, you know, all bets are off. The gloves are off. Put your gum shield on and we're going bare knuckle. <laughs> or some jujitsu or aikido or karate. Like muay thai. Like you can just go at it. Throw hands, okay? But when a person is being nice to you, respectful, they're trying to help you. And all you're doing is just patronizing them and like try- you're looking for a fight. Man, go fuck yourself. <laughs> See, you suck, you suck, you the bitch. See, you suck, you suck, you suck, bitch. I believe it. And speaking of, <sighs> man, you. <sighs> uh, this lady. So I'm I'm over here stocking the shelf, and this lady comes to comes up to me complaining. And um, you know, first of all, I work in the vitamins. I don't know nothing else about nothing else going on, okay? Or I might, but I'm just pretending because I don't want to be bothered, okay? But this lady comes up to me, and um, I'm stacking some vitamins, minding my own business, as usual. And she goes, excuse me, excuse me. You don't got no toilet paper in the women's bathroom. You ain't got no toilet paper. And I was like, okay, I'll let uh, management know. Goodbye. And then I watch her. Wipe her hands on her husband's shirt. Like he's like walking away from her and she starts like pretending to rub his back, but she's really wiping her hands on his back. And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, bitch. <laughs> what, 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 what the hell are you doing? So I was just like, okay, girl. I didn't think anything about it until the end of my shift. The, 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 the end of my shift. I always like to go to the bathroom at my work because at least I know the bathroom at my work is kind of cleaner than the bathroom at my gym. Um, so I like to go to the bathroom before I leave for the gym. And so I entered the uh, downstairs public bathroom. And would you have guessed <laughs> the absolute carnage I saw in the bathroom? <laughs> there was... Feces everywhere. I, 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 I don't like that, okay? So, turns out, old girl, because there was no toilet paper, and she, I guess, shit herself or something, she proceeded to wipe the shit 
either it was on her clothes or on her hands. I don't know. But she proceeded to wipe her shit all over the toilet paper dispenser. <laughs> There was her feces on the toilet paper dispenser on the handicap railing, and she was not handicapped. But apparently she needed that to stand up from all of the mountain of shit she was shitting. <laughs> the toilet paper dispenser. Feces. The handicap railing. Feces. The wall. The wall had feces. And they were all like, it was like a fucking murder scene, man. It was like her little handprints with shit. And there was just like these turtle tracks all over the wall to handle the toilet paper dispenser on the toilet itself, on the the handle, on the toilet head of feces, um, the sink where she allegedly washed her hands and feces. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch was a mess. Okay, this was just, this was like the SS Titanic of shit. It was fucking mayday, mayday. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the shit that fucking like was like hit the iceberg and was like straight up in the air and this bitch was like trying to grab shit just to hold on but she got shit on her fingers <laughs> so you would just see like her fucking shit fingerprints sliding all over the fucking walls and shit <laughs> I went in there and was like, oh, oh, use a, use a, use a bitch. Use a, use a, use a bitch. (laughs) What is worse is that, okay, so she allegedly washed her hands. From what I could tell for the sink, the head, shit in it. And I'm assuming her shit hands touched the the sink, the little the little uh, faucet thing. Um, so it, it, it all made sense to me. Like I'm like, oh shit, this bitch wiped her shitty fingers on her fucking husband's back, yo, man, man. <laughs> Jog off, you fucking prick. That is atrocious. That is so fucking scandalous, bro. You, there, there was paper towels in there. So it wasn't like you couldn't have wiped off your fucking, uh, shit fingers in a paper towel before you touched everything. <laughs> she straight up wiped her shit fingers on her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I was just like, wow. Uh, ma'am, you, 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 you're foul. That is, that is terrible. Man. That is terrible. And speaking of not so terrible things, but kind of terrible, uh, this week we had, it's, it's been a minute. It's been a minute since uh, we've had somebody quit, let alone two people in the same week. <laughs> so not only <laughs> not only do we have two people who put in their two weeks notice and their two weeks ends today as you are hearing the show and we also have two 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 people that are 
possibly pregnant and will be leaving our facilities for many months at a time. So technically, that's four people we're about to lose within the next month. Um, not even in the next month. That's four people we're, we're about to lose in the next like two, three weeks. Um, oh, excuse me. There's another one. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> we're losing another one to, to uh, medical leave. So that is... We are going to be down to five people. Five fucking people. First and foremost, we usually have five fucking people just call off. Now we're gonna have we're gonna be just down five fucking people. And then another five fucking people call off. Man, that's gonna be three of us left. Check. <laughs> there will be officially no one running this store by the time this podcast airs. <laughs> The doors open. Just walk in, take whatever you want. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> Holy shit, man! Absolutely preposterous. But hey, not my problem. I just show up. <laughs> Why do I just show up? Uh, because I need material for this sh- this very podcast. <laughs> Some current events, some current events. Well, it is all over the motherfucking news. It is everywhere. The fall of the brother love, a.k.a. P. Diddy. The saga continues. <laughs> Man, um, you know, I didn't expect it would be this bad, but I knew my mans was up to some shit. So let me tell you a story. I want to tell you a story. Um... 25, 30 years ago, in, up, in, up in church, when your dear host used to go to church before they cast her out for being a gay. Um, at, back in church, in my, in my youth group, uh, one of the times I went to class, my little youth class, uh, they had a gentleman who, I don't know if he was a producer or a filmer, um, that was working with P. Diddy. So this is like 97, 98. And he came to our church to talk to the youth, the youth. And so during this conversation, he told us about how uh, Brother P. Diddy, he said, you know, I work with Puff Daddy, all these little rappers, whoop de fucking whoop. Let me tell you, it's not the glamorous life. Let me tell you, it's not the glamorous life that you guys see in the movies or that you guys see in the music videos. And so he told us that Brother Love would rent out a hotel, would rent out a hotel. And so floors, there would be floors with certain kinds of women on floors. Then there would be certain floors that were just drugs. And then there would be certain floors that were just weapons. Now, at the time, this is all alleged. Um, But now I have come to believe that my guy was right. He was not lying. He was telling the fucking truth because... Some of these people in these lawsuits suing Diddy for sex trafficking and rape and drugging and underage women, some women young as as young as 14 or 17, um, they are all confirming these kinds of stories. And then it gets better. P. Diddy, best friend and rapper homie, Mace, who left, who left the rapper's industry at the height of his game. Okay. Mace had made it. Okay. Went from nothing to something and then made it on Bad Boy and then was under Ditty's tutelage. Okay, and was like a mega rap star, right? At the height of his fame, Mace walked away and became a pastor. And recently he did a podcast. I don't remember the podcast, um, but it's out there. Uh, recently he did a podcast talking about how he gave it all up because he saw where the rap game was going, he had a feeling. In his heart. And he didn't like that. He was like yo. Just I didn't like where the rap game was heading. And I had to get out. And he walked away from millions of dollars yo. Millions. To be a pastor. And. In the years of him being a pastor. And. and, uh, uh, Struggling with money. Just trying to make it. He was happy because he was out of the scene. He wasn't in the mix. And thank goodness, Mace had a feeling. Uh, and, and he was right. Oh boy, P. Diddy turned out to be doing some scandalous ass shit. 
Um, and he's, you know, not the only one. His ex-girlfriend, Cassie, same thing. Old girl was drugged. And he was passing her on to his homies. Like, how the hell are you going to do that to your lady, man? How are you going to disrespect an angel like Cassie? Which, by the way, Pete Diddy met her when she was 16. And I think they started dating when she was maybe 17 or 18. He found her and gave her a singing career at 16 or 17. And then magically they started dating. So that tells me old boy was diddling that when she was underage. That's just my guess. That's not 100% true. But I just got a feeling. I just got a feeling. And so, man, I feel bad. I feel bad for all of these ladies that were engaging in this shit because they thought they needed to do this. And they were too afraid to say no. Okay. Um. This brings me to the next dilemma. Uh, If you're in this element, you're in this realm, you want to be famous so bad that you're willing to to give up your morals? You got to ask yourself, what the fuck? Do I really want to be this famous? Is it worth taking drugs and being passed on to my to my man's friends or is it worth being passed around the industry like a fucking piece of meat no it's never worth it it's never worth it and so my man's is gonna get the fucking book thrown at him and that's cool because you fucking deserve it uh how many people has this man hurt to 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 get to where he's at and then only to find out that it's all a sham it's a fraud guys a a, a fucking scumbag he's pretending to be brother love look at me i'm loving i'm a dad of seven kids i'm loving hey i do good things i throw parties it's fine No, it's not fine. You're supplying people with drugs. You're drugging underage women. You're having sex with them. You're passing them around like they trash. You got kids, man. And specifically, out of those seven kids, four of them are daughters. Come on, man. You don't think to yourself when you're you're sexually assaulting some underage chick like, yo, this is my daughter. Like, this could be my daughter. I wouldn't want some scumbag to do this to my daughter. This fucking enrages me. I'm not even a parent. But if I hear of somebody, some older dude getting with some super young chick or some some lady getting with some super young boy. Now, mind you, if they close an age, fine. But when you're talking, you're 35, you're, 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 you're in your mid to late 30s, early 40s. And you're diddling a fucking 17-year-old? Get the fuck out of here, okay? You're fucking having sex with a 14-year-old? Get the fuck out of here. I just read this morning that fucking Nickelodeon hired all of these pedos who have been charged with having sex with some, with some ages as young as nine. And they got hired at Nickelodeon to work around other kids. What the fuck, man? What the fuck is wrong with people? There are plenty of good people out there that need jobs that don't have sex with underage kids. You couldn't do a little bit more fucking research and pull up their file and be like, oh, shit. The last 10 people I hired have had sex with with minors. And one of them has had sex with a nine year old. You can't be serious. The fucking shit that's going on right now. We got to protect the kids, yo. Kids are fragile. Kids are important. And what you do, your behavior around them, shapes children forever. If this behavior is damaging, it shapes that child. Until that child understands like, oh shit, I'm fucked up. I might need to go get therapy. Or maybe they don't and they do some fucked up shit. And then people go, I don't know what happened. Why would that child do that? Why would he act like this? Or he's an adult. Now he's doing this. Uh, uh, Uh... that environment man gotta gotta protect the kids man this is crazy so you know i i I hope you know because the feds are involved homeland security is involved i hope this motherfucker burns okay there is no way this guy is not guilty okay everybody knew okay And, and and even usher and meek mill Usher was a starving artist who stayed with with P. Diddy back in the day. He stayed at his house. 
and he was interviewed on the Howard Stern show. And Howard Stern asked him, hey, Usher, would you let your kids stay with Puff Daddy? And he said, absolutely not. Usher, in 2005, said, absolutely not. I would never let my children stay there. You, you, hello, alarm bells. Alarm bells. Meek Mill did an, uh, uh, an interview, and he didn't exactly deny that he, he might have been having a sweet or sexy time with P. Diddy. So there's some, some gay ass shit going on. There's some underage shit going on and a whole lot of drugs. Now, God bless you. You want to use drugs? Fine. But when you start giving it to other people and doing scandalous shit with them, I, I got a problem. I got a problem. You're trying to give people drugs to take advantage of them? No. We, we got to call the law. <laughs> and if we don't call the law, uh, then, then we, we need to take care of this because this is crazy. This guy's a fucking danger to society. He needs to be locked up. Locked the fuck up. Man, man, even if you don't find anything, there's all of these women and accusers and lawsuits. And I'm like, yo, somebody, okay, maybe one or two people might be embellishing something. But when you got a whole industry being like, yup, oh, P. Diddy, yup. When you got Cat Williams on Club Shay Shay, he even said, when you got P. Diddy and Epstein hanging together, or you got... P. Diddy and scandalous shit happening. Everybody knew to stay the fuck away from this guy. So, how did nobody do something? How did nobody do something until now? So, kudos to my girl Cassie. Because I think it was last November, she fucking sued this guy. And they settled out of court conveniently because I'm pretty sure there was plenty of evidence to fucking bury this guy. Bury P. Diddy. Fucking scumbag absolute scumbag uh and speaking of scumbag behavior uh as some of you may or may not have remember from last week's episode i talked about a certain uh woman that i used to engage with who uh you know has always said that she loves me but she got a boyfriend or now she got a husband and three kids and she's still trying to Oh, I love you. Or whenever they have a fight. Oh, I want to be with you. Me, 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 me. Okay. Apparently, <laughs> word of mouth works excellent. The grapevine. She must have heard it through the grapevine. Um, I, I either that or she does listen to the show. Uh, but man, she called me up after the show aired and was like, oh, oh. the crocodile fucking tears came. She's like, I'm sorry. I really loved you. I'm so sorry. I treated you so bad. And I was like, bitch, it's too late. You know, it's just a little too late. It's just a little too late. I'm not enough now. 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 I'm not Treat people this way. This is not your cake and eat it too. Nobody got the energy and the time for that, okay? The world is moving. Things are happening. I'm trying to progress in my life, my goals, my dreams, my hopes, my aspirations. I don't have time to sit here and decide if this chick loves me or not or cares about me or not. 20 years later, this lady is a married woman with children. And she's still... Clapping in my DMs like, yo, she's still showing up at my work pretending to get a fucking smoothie. And then she come and talk to me like, hey, hey. And I'm like, nah, hello, how are you? Goodbye. It ain't working, dog. Your charms no longer work. I have removed the last tentacle out of my body from you, okay? Bad. Just bad. I want to say... You know, for whatever rato that told her, or maybe she does listen to my show. I want to say she's not a bad person. Uh, she's just got some behaviors that don't mesh well with my operating system. Okay. I do not want to engage with individuals who are in a relationship already. If you're having trouble in paradise, I'm sorry, but that's not an excuse to try and cheat on your man that's not an excuse to try and pull on my heartstrings and be like oh i want to be with you i always want to be with you no bitch no 
You're just saying these things. You're just doing these things to get attention. And as hurtful as this might sound, it's the truth, at least according to me. Okay? This is just what I see. And I've assessed the situation after 20 fucking years of bashing me head through a door. <laughs> Thinking, oh, one of these days, she's going to love me. She's going to love me. You're going to love me. No. She might love me in her own way, but that is not a love that I, that that works for me. Okay, that's that's what I've learned, and so the power the power of the pod is real, and so for her to call me with the crocodile tears out, tears, I was like, man, you know, I'm sorry that uh, you know that you're going through this, but this is life. We all make choices. And we have to live with those choices, those decisions. Even if you choose not to do anything, that's still a choice. You are not absolved of duty. You have to live with those choices. I don't want to say they're mistakes um, because, you know, these things happen. I mean, they technically are mistakes, but this is what's teaching us that we learn from those mistakes and we either grow or we don't. And we sit and, and, and stay in that area and keep making those mistakes or uh, you are trying to be like me who's going to therapy, who's who's trying to uh, participate in hobbies, who's trying to go to the gym and exercise and 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 work on myself. And how can I be better? That's that's me every day. How can I strive to be better than I was yesterday? And I cannot I cannot be around people who do not believe in this behavior. I cannot. It's just not going to happen. It's too much of a burden to to continuously make the same mistakes and be like, oh, it's someone else's fault. Or it's not me. I'm, mm-mm. No. See, use it, use it, use a bitch. Use it, use it, use a bitch. Uh, that, is, that is the one, this is the one good thing that I will take uh, from Diddy. And that's bitch assness. I don't do bitch assness, even though the whole time behind the scenes he was doing some bitch assness, okay? Um, but he's like, that's bitch assness. I don't do that. I don't do that. Uh, you know, we're free to make some mistakes. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. But only if you choose to grow. If you're going to be that person who's just like, oh, it's somebody else's fault. It's not my fault. Not my problem. But you keep having all these problems. It's your fucking problem. <laughs> the old me would be like, no, I don't want to upset. I don't want to hurt their feelings. But listen, we getting older. And like I said, if you aren't of the school of thought where I make mistakes, I make choices. How can I be better than I was yesterday? If you one of these people who wants to blame everyone else for your problems or you want to turn the fucking substances or you want to abuse Others, nah, we good. You can leave your spare key at the door, okay? <laughs> and I'm going to change the locks. <laughs> I do not want you around me. I do not want that behavior around me. I'm just uh, sh- sh- snip, snip. And I think if you don't already, you could consider evaluating your life. Who's in your life? Who's around you? Who sparks joy? Like my girl, uh, uh, what's her name? Corey Kondo. From the little cleaning show on Netflix, there used to be a meme that I used to post all the time on IG, and it's Corey Kondo, and it's <laughs> somebody photoshopped a gun in her hand, and it, it says, "You do not spark joy in my life. Goodbye." <laughs> I'm sorry, fam. You're a sweet lady. I wish you all the best. But if you want to be in my life, you gotta. Bring the spark of joy. I cannot be with the drama no more. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm my head out. Okay. Um, this week, I want y'all to think about who's in your life, who's around you, and who brings joy. Who brings a spark of joy in your life? Let me know. Send me a DM. See me on the street. Tell me what's up. Tell me who brings you the spark of joy in your life. Um, phew. Oh, 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 shit. <laughs> uh, 34 year old man 
was hospitalized with severe abdominal swelling. When doctors did an x-ray, they found an eel up this man's anus. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently, this 34-year-old man was fishing. And, I mean, first of all, if you're fishing... I thought you don't <laughs> sit in the water. I thought you're on a boat. Okay, this guy said he was fishing and apparently sitting in the water fishing and somehow an eel. This is his this is his testimony. Somehow an eel crawled up his anus. <laughs> <laughs> Man went to doctor complaining about severe abdominal cramping and was unable to use the restroom for three days. (laughs) When doctors performed the x ray, they seen an eel. (laughs) Ah! Surgeons pulled out a live eel out of his anus. <laughs> this is why I love the show. I've gone from being serious and sparking joy to <laughs> pulling eels out of your bum. <laughs> My God, can we buy this guy some kind of chair from Bass Pro Shop? Why are you sitting in the water fishing? And second of all, were you, were you like bent over doggy style f- waiting for the eel while you're fishing? What the fuck are you doing, man? I'm not buying this story, my guy. I think 34-year-old man might have gone to a pet store and bought an eel and put that shit up his ass. <laughs> My man was trying to make a sushi roll. Uh, number 76, unagi roll, coming right out of your bum. <laughs> unagi roll, shim tempura roll. <laughs> this guy straight up had fucking unagi inside of his anos. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> and for my non-Japanese speakers, unagi is ill, if you will. <laughs> See? I'm on my way to Japan, goddammit. Turning Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. <laughs> Eels don't belong <laughs> up your butt, man. Eels belong in the water. I just... I just <laughs> Holy shit! And secondly, where are you? Where are you fishing? That there's eels. I don't want to fish in no place where there's fucking eels, man. That's crazy. Don't eels sting? What's going on? Anyhow, I must end this podcast. Okay, it. I have a UFC to attend. Uh, when I say attend, I have a UFC to watch. So let me give you my fucking UFC picks. Uh, but before I go, uh, please like, share, and subscribe to Rambo Radio, RamboPeradio.com, merch. Um, I'm going to be removing some shirts that I guess have been discontinued. My shop is after me about pulling these shirts from my website. Because if you go to buy them, apparently they're discontinued and they are no longer made anymore. So... Uh, I will go clean that up, and I will put up some new merch very soon. But in the meantime, check out the El Smoocha tee. That's probably my favorite shirt I made. Either El Smoocha or Roddy or uh, my son. I I recently ordered um, some shirts myself, and I am excited for them to arrive, and I can sport them. And when I, I can say, when I do wear my shirts in public, people notice. They go, oh, I like your shirt. I'm like, hell yeah. RambleBoradio.com. Also, industrialistbrand.com. Uh, today is your last day. So when you're hearing this podcast, if it is April 1st, by the time you're hearing this podcast, that means my promo code has expired. So you've got two whole days 
to use promo code GEN10 and get your combat apparel delivered to you. All right, here are my motherfucking UFC picks, UFC fight night. I've got uh, Kowlin Lagrum, Andre Petrovsky, Victoria Durkava, Ibo Aslan, Dennis Bruzuka, Julio Arce, Lupita Gudines Lupi, uh, Nate Lounder, Shiri Nijikarwanani, Bill Alejo, Nusultan Ruzbezkev, Bruno Silva, Vincente Lique, and Manon Firo. Those are my motherfucking UFC picks. Bet with me, bet against me. Who cares? Let's watch some fucking fights. Yeah. All right, folks. I am on my way to Jujitsu. Uh, I will talk to y'all next week. Much love. But until next time, this is Rambopra Radio. I'm out. Peace. This episode of Rambopra Radio is brought to you by Industrialist Brand. Head on over to industrialistbrand.com for all your combat sports apparel needs. Don't forget to use code GEN10 at checkout for a 10% discount on your next order. Once again, that's industrialistbrand.com.